Are you awake now? <laughs> Just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, we do have men's Bible study at Infinity Hall this week at uh, 7 o'clock on Thursday. Please, gentlemen, keep that in mind. Also, uh, we have a number of things for you to help with. We have Nicarest. A lot of it's filled up, but we still need some of you to help with that. So please, look at where you might be able to help and how you might be able to serve. And once again, it's not on site here. We'll be going into Mount Clemens at a special place they have set up there. Also, Franklin Road in gathering as well. Also, just on this after or the second service today, 11 o'clock, we're having um, rededication of teachers, and so we rejoice in that. And that school is starting. But uh, today, make sure you look in the hallway. Uh, the mural that's been had stuff in front of us that don't peek. Uh, now you don't have to peek because you can just look at it. Okay, so take a look at that on the way out today. It's it's really wonderful. Our art teacher here, Miss um, Spader, did that. Right now, greet one another with a wave. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart 
and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. We kneel for a moment of reflection on our sin and God's mercy in Jesus. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, your sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. The Lord is the strength of his people. He is the saving refuge of his anointed. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help. When I lift up my hands toward your most holy sanctuary. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts and I am helped. My heart exalts. And with my song I give thanks to him. to God on high.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, you give your children many blessings, even though we are undeserving. In every trial and temptation, grant us steadfast confidence in your loving kindness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah, chapter 56. The prophet writes, Thus says the Lord, Keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my righteousness be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this, and the son of the man who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath, not profaning it, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let not the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord say, The Lord will surely separate me from his people. And let not the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus says the Lord, To the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose the things that please me and hold fast in my covenant, I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name, that shall not be cut off. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, declares, I will gather yet others to him, besides these already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The epistles from Romans, chapter 11. St. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. For I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles, insomuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles. I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For their rejection means the reconciliation of the world. What would their acceptance mean but life from the dead? As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake. But as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they also may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise for the Alleluia. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. We read together. Jesus went away from there and reduced to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region and was crying. Mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, 
I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. 
I invite you to take a look at the uh, Old Testament reading again with me uh, today, especially the first verse. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my righteousness be revealed. Here we have before us in one verse the two great doctrines that run throughout scriptures, the pillars of God's revelation to all mankind, the law and the gospel. Keep justice, do righteousness. Certainly other summaries of the law can and are given. Perhaps we know, you know, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself a bit better. But keep justice and do righteousness also sums up God's will for you and me. Keep justice. Do what is right by everyone. God calls for justice to be done for the smallest and the greatest with no partiality, no preferential treatment for anyone. Everyone gets a fair shake no matter how rich or poor, how well viewed or poorly viewed by those around them. He calls his people to do justly by widows and orphans and sojourners, to help those in need, to stand up not for their own rights, but to stand up for others to be treated justly and rightly by the powers that be. Keep justice. And do righteousness. Do what is right. Do what God intends in our lives. And in this pair, justice and righteousness, it's here that we might find the first table of the law as well how we are to love and trust and fear God alone, to use his name rightly in our lives in prayer and praise and worship, and to gladly hear and learn his word. Keep justice. Do righteousness. This is what God made his human creatures to do. It was built into what Adam and Eve originally were, and it's what we are still supposed to be. Now, we know that sin pervades and infects every aspect of life in this world, and yet this message of the law still rings true. Keep justice. Do righteousness. We can't shy away from it. We can't downplay the law in our lives just because we know and we see that we can't do it. It is the instruction that guides our individual lives and our life together as a congregation. It's why coming together even to do what seem like small things or big things to us, coming together to provide for the week at McRest or to supply a children through Franklin Avenue Mission or um, earlier the Compassion Pregnancy Center. Other projects like that are so important for us. The ways to help us do right by all our neighbors, even and especially those who can't repay us. Keep justice. Do righteousness. It's the word that reminds us as God's people that we're not just free to go willy-nilly, to do whatever we want to do. Rather, God guides us in living in as his people, living the way he intended. And yet it is the law. And so as the law, it will always eventually accuse you and me. It will always show us more and better ways that we could keep justice and do righteousness. It will find a way to say, you should do this, but you are not doing it. It shows us that what we do seek to accomplish is never enough or or never done rightly enough or never done with the purest of intentions of love for our neighbor. Yes, the law always ends up showing you the ways you fall short to the life God intended for you as God's word says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. In our personal lives, it points out the the fits of anger, the, the bits of gossip, the slips of the tongue. It nips our pride in the bud and shows us where we tip the scales in our favor at the expense of others. And when we start to get puffed up a little bit to think, oh, I've done pretty good, It shows us we have not been nearly as just and righteous as we thought. It points out our self-absorption and our self-love. 
And above all, God's law shows me I have not loved God and his word like I ought. I have not trusted in him alone to save and provide. I've hedged my bets. I've sought comfort and support from various other idols of my heart and mind and life. Keep justice. Do righteousness. Even with my best efforts and intentions, the law ultimately strikes a hammer blow to my heart. Keep justice. Do righteousness. For soon my salvation will come, says the Lord, and my righteousness be revealed. You see, the law is only the first main doctrine of God's word. It's a word we must hear if we're to hear the second teaching rightly, but it's not God's final word. You see, when our eyes are open to the darkness of our sin, the weight of our guilt seems more than we can bear. Well, then God has prepared us to hear this word from him. My salvation will come to you. My righteousness will be revealed for you. You need not despair. Your sins, yes, they're like scarlet, but you shall be white as snow. Yes, even when you thought you were keeping justice and doing righteousness, your best deeds were like filthy rags. But I come to cleanse you, to purify you, to put a new robe of righteousness on you and over you. Yes, God reveals himself to us as the Savior, the giver of the righteousness we need to stand before him. He sees your unrighteousness and, and gives you a righteousness not your own, but one that flows from the cross of Jesus Christ. For it is in Jesus that God's salvation comes and his righteousness is revealed for you. This is what the Apostle Paul was inspired to write in Romans 1. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. You see, the law calls you and me to do righteousness and keep justice and shows us where we fall short. But the gospel invites us to receive God's righteousness as a gift, Pure, purely the righteousness that Christ won for you on his cross and in his resurrection for you to receive and cling to by faith alone. Because that's what the gospel always is. God's word that comes to you to free you from the accusations of the law, true as those accusations might be, but the deeper truth of his forgiveness for you. The gospel always tells you of God's justification of you, sinner though you are. It declares to you the mighty works and deeds of God for you and invites you to cling to them through faith. It invites you to hear and trust in Jesus' words from the cross. It is finished. He kept justice. He did righteousness for you so that you might receive justification and the saving righteousness of God. Yes, the gospel says, despite your sin that should bring death, God gives you life. He forgives your anger, your gossip, your misuse of his name. He gives you the joy of being his own in place of your pride. He tips the scales completely in your favor in his divine justification by his grace. You're declared more just and more righteous than you could have ever been on your own for the sake of Jesus. The gospel tells you that God loves you, that he has saved you, that he placed his name on you in your baptism, and that he loves to be your God, your Savior, your righteousness. The gospel relieves us from the burdens of our best efforts and our failures and gives you rest in the salvation and the righteousness of God. And it's that truth from Romans that the gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes and the, the righteousness of God for faith. It's, it's that truth that becomes the key to unlock the rest of the text for Isaiah for us. All that talk about foreigners and, and eunuchs and, and how they have wanted to join themselves to the Lord but didn't feel that they could, maybe it leaves us scratching our heads a bit. 
But you see, under the temple system, foreigners were kept separate from the people of God. Unless they had fully submitted to the whole law, including circumcision, they remained cut off from full participation in the worship of God's house. And the same was true under the Sinai covenant for eunuchs. They were prohibited from serving God, from being part of the assembly of Israel. Together, these then stand for those whom the law seems to keep at arm's length from God and his gifts, who might wonder about their ability to stand before God and receive what he has to offer. And so Isaiah prophesies the fullness of God's grace and welcome for all who would keep his Sabbath, that is, for all who would gladly hear and learn God's word, for all who would love to hear these two truths, law and gospel, sin and grace. Isaiah prophesies that no nationality, no physical characteristic, nothing that separates one from another in this life, nothing cuts you off from God as you turn to him in repentance and faith in Jesus. All may draw near, all may cling to his covenant, his new covenant for you in Christ that he makes by the blood of his cross. And that's the main theme of our gospel lesson, too. Maybe it shocked us to to hear Jesus so much as call this Canaanite woman a dog, but look at what great faith it elicited from her. This woman clung to the hope that Jesus was for her, too. She clung to the hope that if this Jesus was the son of David, Israel's Messiah, the Lord God made flesh, as she confessed in crying out to him, If he was those things, then really and truly he was not just for Israel, but he was for her too. In crying out and in clinging to Jesus and his word and faith, she was holding fast God's covenant. For Jesus is God's covenant for you and me and all people. The promise of God for the salvation of all who believe. His is the name above all names. His is the everlasting name placed upon you. He is the one who joins you to God and God to you and brings you to the holy mountain of God for his feast and makes us joyful together in his house of prayer. In Jesus, we see the promise of Isaiah fulfilled. In his ministry, we see it fulfilled in the early church, in the the book of Acts, as the gospel is shared with an Ethiopian eunuch and with people of all tribes and nations and languages with the truth that all who call on the name of the Lord God shall be saved. God's salvation has come for you in Jesus. His righteousness for you has been revealed in Christ for you to trust and cling to by faith in him. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my righteousness be revealed. And the Lord God who gathers the outcasts of Israel, the last verse declares, I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. You see, the Spirit works in us to love the name of the Lord, to join ourselves to the Lord as he has joined himself to us. And so let his word be on our hearts and our minds and our mouths and our homes in our life together and in our neighborhoods. The Spirit leads us to be God's servants, giving our lives for others in justice and righteousness. The Spirit leads us to keep the Sabbath, to gladly hear the Word of God in our homes and in worship and in Sunday school and in Bible study. The Spirit leads us in our confession of God's whole Word, like the law of keeping justice and doing righteousness as God intended. We make no bones about the standard that God has set for us and all people but we also stand wholeheartedly and joyfully on the gospel that God's salvation has come, his saving righteousness revealed in Jesus' death and resurrection, that God would gather all to himself in repentance and faith. And that means we can invite any and all to hear this word of truth. We can invite any and all, yes, to to hear the law which must open their eyes to sin and death, maybe even crush them with the weight of its demands, but then to hear the gospel which releases us, frees us, 
empowers us with joy to the life to seek to live as God truly intended until that day when we do so unhindered, when Jesus finally gathers us to himself in eternity. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God that is far greater than all human understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ your Lord. Amen. We celebrate the Lord's Supper today and remind you that if you're a member in good standing here or in another Missouri Synod congregation, you are welcome forward uh, to receive the body and blood of Jesus. If you are not in that category, we invite you forward with your hand over your heart to mark you as one who, re who loves Jesus and we will leave a blessing with you at that time. We worship the Lord now with our offering. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. We thank you, Father, that in your goodness and gracious love, you did not hold our righteous, lack of righteousness and repentance against us, but sent your Son to die, and that by his grace we might be moved to a faith in him, knowing that our sin can never be accounted for by ourselves, but is always covered by Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the mission and the ministry you have poured out upon your church on earth. We pray that you continue to bless us, and, as well as our sister congregation, Historic Trinity in Detroit, 
and we pray that in your goodness the, our whole places of worship might be truly houses of prayer for all nations and all people and that we would desire to see that word spread amongst all we pray as well for our mission of the month the joint seminary fund as it prepares men to be pastors we pray that you would raise up many young men to be pastors in your church for the harvest is great but the workers are few we pray that you would be with our own congregation in our ministry through our church and through our school we pray for our families the Jacob Schwark family, Dale Scott, Carol Seifert, and Tom, the Tom Segan family, that they had hunger and desire your word. We pray as well that by your goodness, you might work in those saints who are under times of stress and persecution, that they might live and, and to the praise of your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, for the gifts you have given in this life. We thank you for the, the gift of marriage, and especially for Russ and Loy as they celebrate 67 years together. We pray that in your goodness you will continue to watch over them and keep them safe. We thank you as well for the birthday of Ruth Schlecht on her 95th birthday. We pray that by your grace she continue to live in a way that will show forth your praise and show forth your mercy in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would grant you know, to all those who are sick and ill help in the times of need, for Keith and for Jacob, for Sam and all those who are recovering and, and we know in our hearts and minds. We pray that you would grant to them peace in their time of stress and open up your mercies to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would make your people to be generous and that you would grant to us generous lives and grant to us generous hearts that with our whole lives, with our, our time and our money, as well as our talents, we might serve you and bring you praise and, great, and, and glory. We pray for McRest. We pray for the in-gathering for... Uh, Franklin Avenue, we pray, too, that you would watch over all who care for the people who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that our school year will be beginning this week, and we pray for our teachers and for our students that they had hunger and thirst after your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation that you would watch over all those who are deployed and protecting our freedoms. We pray for our doctors and nurses, our EMTs, our firefighters and police officers, that they might be uh, wise in times of stress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have established the leaders of our world. We pray that our president, our vice president, our governor, and all those who have been in the positions to affect and and influence our laws, might receive good and wise counsel, and they'd be, they would pursue justice and, and righteousness that is in accordance with your law. We thank you as well, Heavenly Father, for the leaders of our church body, for President Harrison of the Missouri Synod and President Davis of the Michigan District. We pray as well for the pastoral and called workers, as well as the lay leaders of St. John, that you would ever lead and guide them in manner that would increase our faith and give to us a walk that reflects Christ's mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the city of Detroit and those of us in our suburbs, that by your goodness there might be many who come to know the love of Christ and that they would, we would all flee sin and cling to the promises of Jesus and find in him our sufficiency. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, into your hands we commit all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. 
Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly me, trite, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who in this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened the way to everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bless we the Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.